Welcome, everyone, to another episode of USF Football History. Uh, I'm your host, Chad Berger. I am here tonight to talk about some of the, the USF glory years building up to that championship run. Um, and so we have uh, some recurring guests with us, Tim Hyatt, who you all know and love from the USF radio broadcast, and uh, Matt Witwicky from D2Football.com is also with us. Uh, we, we have a couple players from the 2000 era with us, and so uh, we'll give them the stage to introduce themselves. We'll start with Brady. You're going to start since you're on the top row. Go ahead and introduce Perfect. yourself. No problem. Uh, Brady Schwebach from West Des Moines, Iowa. Played from uh, 2003 to 2007. Played left guard. Yeah, Rob Tiff uh, graduated from Redfield High School, played at USF from 2004 to 2007, and I played outside linebacker and special teams. Special teams ace. I'm glad you threw that in there. <laughs> uh, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, you know, you guys obviously were a part of, you know, the, the 2006 national, ch national championship and, and the 2007 season and, and so we want to kind of talk through a little bit of, you know, how you guys built that, that you know, winner's win mentality and, and the championship thing. And, and to do that, we're going to tell some stories. And uh, so I think to start off with, you know, one, one of the things that, you know, I, I don't know, thought might bring up some stories is uh, some of the, the teams that we played against back in those days. Uh, one of the memorable teams that comes to my mind is Morningside. One of the memorable opponents that we played was Morningside. Uh, Morningside gave us our the, the USF their only loss in the 2005 season, and that was actually the last loss of the GPAC era, uh, the only loss between September 15th, 2001, and uh, when, U, when USF left the GPAC in 2010. Uh, so, I, you know, obviously you guys played a the game there that was a tough one for you. Tell some stories about playing against Morningside. What, what do you remember about those guys? Well, truthfully, I think uh, Morningside kind of has a, you know, a little special place in my heart because uh, I know when I was going through high school and kind of figuring out what I wanted to do in life, you know, and I was wondering, gosh, am I going to be playing football? Am I going to be just going to college? What am I going to be doing? Um, one of my high school classmates, uh, Andy Sharada, was getting looked at pretty heavily uh, from Morningside. Both his parents went to Morningside. They were alum, big boosters. Um, I also went down there and just kind of just didn't get a good feel and um, was lucky to have, you know, Coach Young kind of come to my doorstep and offer me a spot with USF, which, um, you know, I know when I've been, been down there to visit with Coach Ryan, it was, you know, I was so adamant that I wanted to play center. I have no idea why. I probably could played center in high school, but I was so dead set on playing center. Um, and that's when I had my one on one with Coach Ryan. It was, hey, I want to play center. And, um, you know, he's like, hey, I don't foresee us bringing you in as a center and you probably won't start for a couple of years. And I just, at that point in time, I just didn't know if I was even going to play. Um, but obviously, when I had my chance with USF, I tell you what, I, uh, my true freshman year, when we went down there and finally won, I was probably the first person run over there to Coach Ryan and shake his hand. Uh, let them know that you know hey this is what you passed up <laughs> so i mean it's they were truthfully you know i know uh you know probably one of our biggest rivals was was northwestern but i think as time progressed you know morningside established quite a you know good team good uh, tradition down there you know so they were always a you know a tough opponent um they always came ready to play and you know whether we were playing there or playing you know at the bomb um you know they always try to give us a run for their money yeah, um, I know uh, being – playing them – we played them five times, I believe. We beat them once in the playoffs. But, but the one time that sticks out is the time they, they beat us. You know, it, it still stings a little bit. Um, it was my only regular season loss, and I think Schwebach probably your only regular season loss too. Um, and, and so like, that sticks with you a little bit. But, you know, talking about memories, my ultimate memory from college football is the game. Uh, that we lost against them, unfortunately, but but I'll never forget it. Uh, I uh, We had a pretty good punt block dialed up that week, and we knew they had a weakness on punt block. And Ross Simple and I shot through the gap, and I blocked the punt, and I jumped down it in the end zone and scored a touchdown, my, my only touchdown, being on defense. And having hands like this, you can't get a lot of interceptions. So 
uh, <laughs> my my punt block, I scored a touchdown, and it actually put us ahead. And um, I remember just being numb, like I couldn't remember. I, I just to this day, I just the excitement. Just I remember going to the sideline and just being like, "Holy crap!" You know, I just scored my first touchdown, and, and like the biggest game because we were number like one or two, and they were number like three or four or something like that in the country at the time. Right. And GPAC was announcing like biggest conference game ever, you know, all this and that. And like, I just scored a touchdown in this game. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. And then about five plays later, um, I'm a uh, bullet out on our punt team. And I'm still just like adrenaline through the roof. And I fly down the field, like four, three, 40 speed, just adrenaline, not that fast, but as fast as I can. <laughs> and the guy start catching it and I just, hit him as hard as I can. And I remember jumping up and still thinking I did the right thing. And I'm like, yeah. And the ball hits the ground. Like that's how early it was down the field. And, and then I'll never forget. Uh, we're in the locker room after the game and like get emotions. It's our first regular season loss. What's happening. Like we, we haven't experienced this before. And, some people are crying, you know, some people are just upset. And Jake Spade, a senior linebacker at the time, looks at me and he goes, that was the, the biggest hit I've ever seen in my life on special teams. <laughs> it wasn't about the loss. It wasn't about, like, <laughs> touchdown. It was like, you you hit that guy. Hard. You, you know, I've seen somebody hit somebody like that. And, and yeah, anyway. So, but yeah, we always max prepared for those guys. Um Chad Houston was an All-American safety for them. Uh, we ended up playing arena football together. He's still a good friend of mine. And so those relationships and stuff you build with those teams. And, and we were still 4-1 and one against them, so I can give them a little crap. But that one, you know, they'll never let you forget about it. But I think we got them back. So. Let, me, uh, <laughs> let me ask, um, Tim, obviously you and I have a different vantage point yeah. and obviously not being on the field. Um I recall that team having – was it Craig Fabi, the yep. quarterback who was like all world? I mean, he, he was putting up like 350 yards a game. And they had that really – was that the year they had the really tall receiver? Uh, was it Dante Johnson or something like that? Yep. The guy who was like um, – right. he could jump out of the out of the gym. And I, mm -hmm. I, I think he was a problem from what I remember in that game. And uh, I, th those are kind of some of the things that stuck out to me is Morningside always had receivers that were hard to deal with. Yep. Whether it was a little slot guy, you know, like a Bo Kildo or other guys like that. Um, but those are some of the things that came to mind for me that specific year. Right. They, um, they ran a really good screen game, I remember, that we just really struggled with. And, and they didn't, you know, then they'd hit us deep with Johnson. And they had a great game plan. Like, morale was kind of dialed in, too. It, it was honestly probably one of the better. I mean, it ended up being a great game, too. Oh, well, fantastic it game. The thing I remember from that game, I, I'm pretty sure it was their first touchdown. They ran a reverse, and when they handed it to the guy going around the end, the guy that gave it to him, his knee was on the ground, and the, the referees missed it. And I, I, I know the, our sideline was up in arms about it, and he, <laughs> he ended up taking it to the house, and that was the first score of the game, if I remember right. Um, that was pretty – I mean, because it was, it was early in the second quarter. It was a scoreless first quarter, kind of one of those – heavyweight fight kind of deals where teams are slugging it out, you know, and then they kind of broke the ice there with that one. But, yeah, yeah, that uh, linebacker, I believe it was Enfinger. I mean, they had they always had a solid defense. You know, they had a pretty good defensive mind. I mean, that Enfinger, I mean, he would he would fly so fast the ball and he'd fill gaps so quick. So I know, like, that was one of the biggest things that we always focus on during that week is, you know, how we're going to stop, you know, their obviously – their blitzes, their their stunts, um, and that was one of the biggest things. I think Enfinger really kind of controlled that defense, and obviously, I think that's what made them, you know, kind of a powerhouse in the G Pack, you know, alongside with us as well. But you know, that that guy was amazing. I don't know if you got, I don't know, Tiff, I don't know if you remember that guy, but he was a pretty soft guy. Yeah. Well, do you, do you remember Brady? Um, I think you guys had trouble running the football that game, but wasn't it Joey? Wasn't Joey? Uh, you know, right able to or able, able to hit a few shots down the field. Yeah, uh, we had a or, run and the play action started going off there towards the, the second half. So yeah, yeah, I mean it was a heck of a football game. But um, what uh, the, the following year, you guys end up, if I recall correct, you guys end up seeing Morningside twice. Uh, not the same team. Fabi's gone. The receiver's gone. 
think you guys kind of kind of took advantage of them both times, pretty by big, big, pretty big numbers, if I remember right. What, what do you guys recall from those games? I think the, the guys, I think the whole strategy was different. We didn't go into it, you know, like out there, hey, they're missing a whole bunch of people. We knew they were still yeah. going to try to show up, right? Um, sure. I think we obviously game plan the same as, you know, if they had all their all-stars, all their, you know, key players still playing. But, you know, after that first couple of series, you could just definitely tell once they kind of saw us just running down the field. I mean, they lost all gas. You know, it was – I mean, we were we were running all over them. We were hitting, you know, play action. Um, you know, it was, it was definitely a different team. Yeah, we. Uh, I remember just kind of going into it with that chip on our shoulder too, a little bit. That I think you know, sport, good sports teams kind of thrive off that. Whether you know, their seniors were gone, or never could care less, you know. But we, we we still had that feeling of that regular season loss, and we know that they were a good squad and their coach well. That if you go in there half-hearted you could easily get beat so uh yeah we prepared just as hard as we always did and because we were the better team i think that's why you saw the difference in score and fit you know i mean we sure, were, sure. i wouldn't say we were in or more or less prepared i think we just went in it like every week i mean we just went in every week so prepared at usf no matter the team well your, your final season when you guys played no seven uh you guys go down to morningside and getting a bit of a barn burner with them I remember Trey Erickson had a real good game. Uh, you guys actually were up by a few scores. They made it look a little bit closer in the end than it probably was. Um, what, what do you guys recall from that that final meeting you had with him? It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Such a I mean, line response. Guys, uh, it was funny after the first – I remember when we were out there warming up, um, I remember someone telling me, like, do you know what the heat index out here on this field? It's 100 or some degrees. I was like – Trust me. Can you see how bad I'm sweating? Yeah, I I know how hot it is. Um, I mean, it, it was a, it was a scorcher. I mean, it was it was a hard fought battle. I remember being down there, just you know, it was a hot Saturday afternoon, just in the trenches, slugging it out. And um, obviously, that, like kind of Tiff mentioned earlier, I think obviously the the better team us came out on top there. We we're you know prepared, ready to go, and um, yeah, it was just. It was a memorable moment because obviously knowing that it was our last season going on top, knowing that we'd finished the G Pack, you know, being our biggest rivals, you know, Northwestern, uh, you know, the morning sides, et cetera. I mean, it, it felt good uh, to be on the top and walk out of that, off that field, you know, with the W that day. Yeah, it's it's funny you talk about the heat, right? Because I remember in, in our conference, we, I mean, when there's no doubt about it, the two games were morning side and, and Northwestern. And um when when you go into those games you're like you know you kind of have this mental picture of like what's going to happen you don't expect to show up like midday sunshine and you know 100 degrees you kind of think like football weather, you know and, and so I, I i truly think i remember being like yeah I, i'm pumped up but in my head I, I wasn't i was like you know i was kind of like i'm here i know my job but i'm not like just ready to go, you know, beat the crap out of these guys. And it showed a little bit, and we had to kind of wake up, I think. You know, it was closer than it should have been. Yeah. Did you did you guys like playing down there? I always kind of thought that was a an interesting place to play, you know, kind of sunk in a little bit. Uh, they always had a pretty good turnout. Ladies and gentlemen, Marlon Loban comes into the frame. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> Better late than never, baby. <laughs> Did your alarm just Look, go off? It's 9, 18 p.m. <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to blame Midco. We're going to blame Midco. So is that where we're going? <laughs> What's going on, Marlon? How are we doing over there, boys and girls? <laughs> so, Marlon, we're, we're, we're uh, talking about some of our memories playing against Morningside right now. Uh, but before we get there, I don't know if you want to introduce yourselves and tell about like what years you played at the coup and and position and you know things like that. We got to go back that far. <laughs> You're the young guy. What are you talking You're about? Us, man. I'm the young guy, but I played linebacker. It hurts. <laughs> no, but I, I'm 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 Marlon Loban, um, from Pittsburgh, California. Um, lost but honest junior college prior to um, stopping at USF. I played there and. 2008 till about 2009, two football seasons. Um, sometime I wish I had more. Um, obviously, you know, like the guy like Tiff, he played there a little longer than I did, so he got a little more memories. But the, the time that I had there was was great. We went back to back. Um, so opportunities were, were slim, but 
we had a great time doing it. Um, so I played outside linebacker um, slash defensive end. Got a lot of banging and clanging going on during, during those times. Um, other than that, yeah, it was about 10, 10, no, not even 10 years ago, 12, 13 years ago now. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm up there. Well, Marlon, we're, Marlon, we're going through uh, Morningside first. Uh, the guys just got done talking, actually, about their experiences against Morningside. Um, what do you recall about uh, you guys played them in 2008? A uh, game that you guys – pretty pretty tight game. You guys win 34, 31. See, see, uh, see, you looked at the scoreboard. You looked at the scoreboard. You the yards weren't close. Statistics. Yeah, the yards exactly. weren't close. <laughs> exactly. See, football's not won on a scoreboard all the time. You got to remember that. We actually play like a great defensive game. Um, offense, you know, we get the ball back to those guys, and they, did, they didn't really do their, their justice at times. But in all reality, if you look at the statistics, we, we laid it on them. Um, I can remember lining up on a field goal block and realizing, like, the chances of them tying the game was, like, they can tie the game. But we went all out. We didn't block the field goal. We didn't – but it was just the effort out there. But in our reality, when we won 34-31, I can remember getting a GPAC trophy, and I'm like, dang, this is what it feels like to win a, a conference championship. And I can remember in Coach Morrill, like – don't suck it in. This is not what this is about. We don't buy championship rings for conference. We buy championship rings for the national championship. And I'm like, in the back of my head, I'm like, wait, what? Like, we just won a championship. Like, he's like, no, this is not, this is not the stop. This is just, this is just as long away. So I can remember yeah. that vividly, but in all reality, the scoreboard didn't do justice to how we, I feel like how we put it on them, how we prepared to put it on them. Um, in all reality, for the years that I got the chance to play them, I think they were both great matches. But in all reality, I think we walked away knowing that we were the better team most times. But in all reality, I know um, the way we prepared, it was like, you're going to respect these guys and you're going to show up to play. But we're here to play football and we're here to play coop ball and that's the win. I don't know if you remember from that game, but uh... – it was 34-31, and, and you guys took over the ball on offense with about nine minutes left and never gave the ball back to them. The offense ran 18 plays, 17 runs, and ran the whole nine minutes off the clock. I'll never forget watching that drive. And it wasn't big plays. It was just chunk, 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 and the clock just kept ticking, ticking. They never saw the ball again. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I can remember them coming up the night before. It was like, for us, it was a it was, it was my first, like, big game experience, I, I can say, like, playing at USF. Um, I can remember them coming up the night before when I – and I remember, like, hey, how far is – how far is Sioux City? And, you know, now that, I, now that I practically live there from coaching down there and playing down there for uh – Uh-oh. You're, you're back. They came up the night before. They came up for the night before, and we're only 45, 48 minutes away. Well, they really want to win this ball game. <laughs> so, um, when once I remember that drive though. I remember it was like fourth and like seventeen, and coach called the play. He goes nine, nine, nine. Zo, scramble around, take off. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Now, those those were those were the good days for us. I, I remember being at the game, sitting with. Uh, B. Lynn Fouts, Barry Fouts, who was the GPAC columnist, um, and he was sitting next to me. He's a Morningside grad, a really nice guy. And, uh, you know, we were kind of needling each other because it was a back-and-forth game. And uh, I remember as that drive was going on, about midway through the field, Morningside called a timeout because I think they were like, okay, we got to figure out a way to stop this. And there was a train that was leaving town in the distance. <laughs> yeah. And you could see it going left to right. And I turned to Barry and I go, that's the Mustangs train leaving town right there because this one's over, Barry. And Head, Headed and, back south. Yeah, anytime I see him, he, he goes, oh, it's that train again, isn't it? And he remembers that real well because they, they couldn't get Lorenzo off the field. Lorenzo was making plays. And and uh, that, and that, that was the game afterwards. Tiff, I don't know if you remember this after, but uh, Tyler Newman's mom, got like sucker punched by a Morningside fan, like at the bottom of the stairs on the way out of the Bob. Yeah. And Tyler's brother-in-law who was like in the army or something, went and looked up the guy and they were in the parking lot throwing hands and all kinds of stuff. I was like, Whoa, what's going on here? And 
they had to call the See, police to, I, to get to get the get those Morningside guys out of there. Yeah, I, I shall not. I shall not confess. <laughs> yeah, right. No. I do. Uh, I do remember that now that you mentioned. But yeah, uh, I think Terry got a little rowdy and Barb got in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah it was. I mean, they 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 literally got just like cold cocked out of nowhere. And I mean, all of a sudden in the parking lot, the story went from the game to what just happened here. And, it's, uh, it's the recipe for a great rivalry. I mean, just hey, in all reality, <laughs> if you know T. Newman, and if they got anything <laughs> Newman in them, they're I'm lucky sure. Newman didn't come running down the stairs with his cleats on or something. Um, no doubt. He, no. He, he, he's probably one of the first guys I ever met that played inside linebacker at 200 pounds. <laughs> Literally. Like, I, it was so I, I played outside and he played inside. I was like, Shouldn't we be switching positions? But after getting to knowing him, I could imagine where he got where he got the 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 the, the delivery from. Like, um, yeah. So I, you know, I don't put it past that they got into a scuffle, and I know the Newman's probably won that scuffle. So I, 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 I'll leave I'll leave that at that. Now, yeah. Marlon, let, let me ask you. Now you you've been you've been playing and coaching what Sioux City Bandits for probably the better part of the last five six years. All all told, is that right? Yes, yes, indeed. Yep. So there's been Morningside football guys that you probably have crossed paths with or played down there with. Yes, no? I, so, and I'll be completely honest with you, Morningside guys to get to play for Sioux City, um, the Sioux City Bandits, which is probably not even, it's probably USF Augie distance. It's so hard to get them to. I'll be completely honest. It's huh. so hard to get them to play for us. Um, if you go back and look at the roster, um, it's very rare that you'll see you'll see more USF guys in my time at least than you'll see okay. Morningside guys. I don't know if that's because we're better than them, or you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, you, but, do you stick do you stick your chest out when you're down there because you, because you've beaten them down there a few times? Um, you know, that and then plus the <laughs> Wayne State guys because Coach Irv is a Wayne State guy and they had a few Wayne State guys for – at some point we had more USF than uh, Wayne State or Briar Cliff or I, – I would I would like, hey, like, hey, this is – Briar Cliff still has football? Here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, they, they play more than golf down there. So Okay. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with golf, but at the end of the day, <laughs> no, we're, no. we're the superior football sport. <laughs> but to be honest, it is very it's very hard to get a, a Morningside Mustang to play for us. And the ones that we do have, I've become very close to them. Um, I could just name a couple, um, Zach Slugger, um, Devin Groenhanger. Um, and then we had maybe one or two with a couple stops here and there but didn't finish out the year. But those two guys off the top of my head um, played for us. And I know former defensive coordinator, um, John Dievenberg, he played. He throws it in my face all the time. He probably beat Tiff when they they won the conference championship. The Michael Clark. And, yep, yep. Uh, John Stevenberger and then um, I forget no, the other guys. Name. <laughs> they'll 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 throw it in my face right now and then how they beat us. And I'm like, dude, that was we. You got a t-shirt and a ring. We got a t-shirt and we forgot about that. We went and got a ring later on. Yeah. <laughs> now now, Berger, let me ask, what what do you recall? Uh, of of some of those games with Morningside. Well, I I remember those were probably some of the biggest crowds. Um, yeah. You know, back in back in the the day of G Pack football that I I remember. Um, you know, it was just crazy to to see even larger than the the crowds that we see nowadays. Uh, pretty much for almost every single game, and and yeah. just the amount of fans that they brought up. And that USF, uh, you know, brought in at that time to, to watch those games. I remember that 2008 game was might have been like almost 5,000 people in the in the stadium, and yeah. it was just packed, um, just absolutely crazy. So I I don't want to rush us along here, but I do want to get to some other teams as well. And I want to mention for those of you that are watching on the live stream, please comment, and we can bring some of those comments in throughout the show. Um, so, uh, I think this was when Schwebach was talking earlier, but, uh, we had a, a boss hog reference going on there. So I'm sure that's some type of, uh, in, inside reference, uh, <laughs> there. <my coworkers. laughs> and, uh, Jason Glasgow chimes in here and says that, uh, if you ask Morell, he's the reason they lost to Morningside. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he still swears by that. He, I believe it was his hamstring or his quad or something was like wrecked. Like you, no one would have played. Normally would have played on that hamstring. I, I think it was his hamstring, right, Frank? I think so. I think you're right. But I just remember like he was like guys. I can't. I can't walk on this thing. How am I going to play football? They're like, I don't know, but if you can't, Mel's going to kill you. <laughs> he sure, Mel Bryce said it. It, it, it did bother him. He played still really well. Um, like I said earlier, it was still like a very close game. It came down to the wire, but um, every time you're with Glasgow, he still brings us. So we got that stuff. Glasgow <laughs> chimed in. He said it was a shoulder injury, and Barnes had to go okay. in. Sorry. Oh, leave Barnes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Barnes made the call. Wow. <laughs> no pressure, Barnes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, obviously we're talking about Morningside. You know, the other conference opponent you think of is Northwestern, the Red Raiders. I know you guys have nothing but good stuff to say about them. But um, let me ask uh, Schwebach and Tiff. Let's kind of jump to that 2006 game. You guys get down two scores right away, and uh, it was about 90 degrees, or at least it felt like that in my body on the uh, so far sideline getting all the sun. Um, that was a warm day there, and uh, Schwebach, you had to remember that. And, um, yeah, it was more like 100, but uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, th then you guys come battling back and uh, find a way to win 17-14. What do you guys recollect from that game? I think it was just – it was kind of shell shock because it's like we had punched in the mouth so quick right away, and it was like, holy crap, like, you know, you know what's going on? It's kind of a gut check moment. Um, I mean, I I still remember my old line coach coming over there and, you know, just grilling us, Coach DeBoer was over there, you know. I think it was just – boiled down to, you know, we just didn't come out firing right from the hip, you know. And I think it was just uh, – it took us having that happen to, for us to come out and just like, oh, Shoot, we gotta come to play, you know. Um, we gotta get this figured out, uh, which obviously we did. I mean, it was trust me, it was definitely a slug, you know, slug match. But you know, like like you said, I mean, winners find, always find a way to win, you know. And we came together, you know. Halftime, I remember being in the locker room. We were all hooting and hollering, you know. I wouldn't say yelling at each other, but obviously, you know, throwing that camaraderie around and you know, getting each other's faces about, hey, get the job done, you know. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, you know. Winners found a way to win. So, I, I remember just kind of that shock and awe of like we're down two touchdowns and like, how bad is this going to get? And then our defense kind of clicked. And we were just kind of shutting them down then and just almost being like offense. I, I mean, we were such a team then, we didn't need to say anything. But I remember, you know, I could have just looked at Shway on the sideline and been like, hey, we got this. They're not going to score again. Just go score enough points to win this and, and we did and I, I still think it just I think about that game a lot and I think it goes back to just like rivalry I mean you could be we could have been horrible and they could have been the national championship team and it would have been a closed game or vice versa you know like and they were a good squad so it just came down to like a rivalry and, and they played us really really well I mean they, they wanted to beat us just as bad as we wanted to beat them and like I mean Coach Young Winners win because that's what winners do, and we, we just did. You know, I, I remember, like, recovering a fumble on the special teams and that and just, like, getting mopped in the pile and just, like, everything I could do to hold on to that football. And when I got up, like, my upper body was just, like, like I just swam the English Channel or something. <laughs> 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 physically for pulling on that ball, but I was, like, not. But that, I think, like, was a little metaphor for, like, we weren't going to let that game get away from us. And, yeah, 4 and all against those guys. So, yeah. do we even need to talk anymore about them, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, that was something that, uh, you know, the, the Northwestern week, I think, had a little bit more to it leading up to the game. Uh, did, yeah. did you guys do anything special, you know, during the, the Red Raider week going up Leading up to the game, or or was you know? I'll tell you what. Well, I was a freshman. I had no idea who Northwestern was or who the Red Raiders were. I mean, I just showed up saying, "Hey, I'm going to be playing college football. Let's see how this goes." Um, and I tell you what, it, it, I remember Coach Morell 
saying a quote. I don't know if, if that, I'm going to say it right, but it was something like, none matters a week, uh, even matter, but Red Raider a week. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like, I don't, I don't get what that means, but I guess I'll, I'll find out. And I, just, <laughs> I remember, you know, after that game prior to, you know, Red, you know, 10 Northwestern, I mean, you could just feel it in the air. I mean, it was a whole different ball game. It was a whole different scheme. Players were intense. Coaches were even more intense. I'm like, holy crap, what did I just get myself into? Like, do I really want to do I want to keep doing this, or do I want to take my red shirts and just, you know, get out of here? <laughs> you know, I, remember, I remember the boys at 1704 made T-shirts that week. <laughs> They had a little saying on them. I'm not sure what we can say on it. Here. It's like the name of a florist, wasn't it? Yeah. It said okay. FTD. FTD. Yeah, the florist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we meant forgive the Dutch for what we're Yes, about. that's exactly yeah. what it was. Yes. Forget the Dutch. I, I, I think that was in the Argus Leader the next day. Something okay. about <laughs> something about that. Yeah. Something. But we actually wore those. A lot of us wore those under our pads. Yeah. And I remember being like, yeah, I'm gonna take off my pads after the game, have this shirt on. And when it was 14 to nothing, I was like, <laughs> not taking my pads off. Yeah, I'm not taking my pads off. Yeah. I still don't think but, I did because we got in trouble. But truthfully, I think, you know, especially when all the freshmen, I know Tiff when you came in, I think Northwestern was a huge rivalry right away at first. But I think as time progressed, especially when we got, I mean, I get it, the clo closer game towards you know, when we were seniors, but. You know, I think it, it kind of switched, and I thought it became more of a morning side rivalry than actually Northwestern because I just kind of feel like they almost for a while fall off the board. Um, but obviously, I mean, they're they're a good squad. They they have good coaching staff. And obviously, you know, they're they're going to stay within that you know top you know three four uh, teams there in the GPAC. Yeah, it, it is like one last quick thing on Northwestern, but like Trayvon mentioned it, but like the intensity that we can in, in practice. Was on a on a whole, and I mean, we were so prepared for Dana College stories. I mean, like you name it, we were so prepared for everybody we played. But when it came to Northwestern, like Coach Morrell took another. He was already intense. He took like another switch and <laughs> right there with him. And it, I mean, it, yeah, like your freshman year, you're like, whoa, like you know. So it's cool when you see like Alabama, you know. Uh, LSU week, you know, rivalry week, you know what's going on in those big You can schools. feel that. You can feel yeah, that. I, I felt a little bit of that, but um, yeah, that was just the most fun part of college football for me. Was, was those you, you, bring up a, you bring up an interesting point, Rob. You've said it a couple times. And I mean, if you're being honest, in your regular season games, there was two teams that you really probably had to worry about in, in the over the years that you guys played. Because the rest of the GPAC was pretty average, if that. How did you guys keep that focus in practice against the Dana Colleges and the Midlands and Concordia? And I So where I came from high school, like we won like, I think I won seven games my whole high school career and, that, and all those were like my senior years. So I went like 0-8 a few years in high school. So I knew what it was like to, to lose. And I remember coming into USF and I think we were playing, uh, I think we were playing Doan. Or no, we were playing Hastings and they had a really good running back and I was in film and Morale was like, this guy's going to, you know, he's an All-American. He's going to run you over if you're sleeping. And I remember just being like, okay, holy cow. And I worked with Trey Erickson on the sideline of a practice. I was like, what if we lose to these guys? And he looked at me and he's like, like, just like I, like it was the dumbest question. <laughs> like the sky was red. Like, he's like, we don't lose. And it like literally just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, cause I came from a losing tradition to this, to like, and I'm a freshman and I look at Trey and he like, with not even conviction, it was just like, like, we don't lose. What are you talking about? <laughs> like every week, it just, that winning mentality, like Vincent Barty said it, winning is a habit, unfortunately, so I was losing and like our habit was winning and we just, like, just had the rest of it. Tiff, I can, I can, I can so feel that because when I came out of junior college, um, my two years there, I think we want to complete four games out of 20. Uh, in all reality, we were better talent-wise than we were, um, you know, when it came to wins and losses. But, like, when I reported to USF, it was just kind of like, hey, I'm here to play football, and whatever happens, happens. Dude, it was like winners win, and that's because what winners do. And I'm like, what do you mean? That's so cli – in the back of my head, I'm like, that's so cliche. Like, what do you what – do, what does losers do? Like, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, I guess I did come from a losing program. We would just show up and prepare to hopefully win. At USF, it was like – 
we have to win. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's like, I can remember the Red Raider week. I remember I, my favorite color is red still to this day, but I will never say that during Red Raider week. Like, I love the color red. Like, I just like red. And, and I remember Morell at the top of the bob, like, sitting in the, sitting in the middle, like, it's Red Raider week. And I'm like, what's it's just a normal football game. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it was just coming off the FTD phase, and I was just like, "Okay, I guess that really means something." So I'm I'm a junior college kid, thinking I, I thinking I know it all. And I'm like, I get here, and I and I'm like, "Okay, winners win because that's what winners do." And I and for a little bit, I'm just like, "What do you mean, like winners win because that's what winners do?" But in all reality, now that I'm you know obviously av- after I bought into the the whole mentality, it's like that's an everyday lifestyle. That's like you said, how uh, Erickson looked at you, like. We don't lose. That's how you really, that's how we really prepare. Like, we don't lose. We don't lose. Like, and now to this day with my kids, to me, is every single day, like, winners win because that's what winners do. And if you lose, whether I do something at my job, I'll use it in real life. Like, how am I going to get better? What am I going to do to get better? So it's just really how mentality stuck with me. And I can feel everything you just said, how it's just like, they looked, I felt that way, like, they looked at me like, what do you mean? Like, are you questioning that? Like, no, I'm not. But I'm just saying, like, the chances we could lose. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I get you. Like, like, what if we lose? Like, there's, like, this is a game, so, like, anything can happen. And it was like, I mean, like, I'm telling you, like, the sky's going to come up just pink tomorrow. Like, it's not going to happen. Like, it's going to be blue. <laughs> We're going to win this football game. What are you talking about? So, yeah, I guess every week to answer your question, Tim, we just had that mentality. And we didn't prepare like we prepared for DWU. I mean, DWU had like two or three NFL guys on their team. You know, we I, we had like maybe one or two Division One kids that could could have gone. You know, so we just had to prepare every week. Like there was no tomorrow, and, and our coach, one hundred percent credit to our coaches. Like they got us ready every week. Yeah, Mar- Marlon, let me ask you. Uh, I'm going to tell a little bit of a, something that that I recall from way back when. Um, there was a story about um, the the rivalry, the Red Raider Week, where uh, there just happened to be a, a Northwestern kind of like uh, jogging suit that happened to show up at the coach's door. And uh, Marlon might know where I'm going with this. And um, and uh, so Eric Inama, uh basically had decided with the other coaches that they wanted to kind of pull a little bit of a, a prank on a you prank. guys that yep. week just to try and keep you a little bit loose. So the first day of the week or no, the, uh, on Tuesday, Inama dresses up in this, this Northwestern outfit. And he's basically on like the South end of the end zone, a little bit behind yep. there, uh, behind yep. the fence line. And apparently, you know, uh, he, he had, a, he had a, a Rutgers hat, a red Rutgers hat with an R on it, just like the red Raiders. And yep. apparently it caught the as- attention of a few players well, by the time he gets figured out, he, he you know, in terms of you guys being able to see him from a distance, he kind of jets out of there before anything happens. Yep. Then he then he gets a hold of Dusty Havorka, who wasn't with, you know, wasn't on the staff or anything at the time. And Dusty dresses up two days later in it. And <laughs> he, he's out way on the north end over by the FCA building with a clipboard and watching you guys. Yeah, and the whole deal and watching you guys. So now, now this kind of starts to fire up a little bit more, and then they just figure out, okay, we need to kind of let the cat out of the bag here because right before that, Inama went running out after him. So yeah. Inama runs out after him, comes back, and he's like, ah, oh, well, I couldn't get him, blah 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 blah. And then that was it, the next day or whatever it was. You guys are stretching, and and you and you're you're facing you're facing north. And, yep. you know, back, back to the locker room. And all of a sudden, the guy in the red jumpsuit comes running right through the stretch and in the middle. And you guys don't know what to make of it. Some people are cracking up. Some people are ready to go jump him. And of all people, who goes and jumps him? Tyler Newman. <laughs> <laughs> and Newman tackles him and realizes, of course, it's, it's at that point, Inama. But then everybody can't figure out how was it Inama if Inama was just chasing him a day ago yes. and all this stuff. What what do you recall of of that situation I, uh, and that story and what they put you guys up to? 
now, now, now that now that you've refreshed my memory, I think we were doing a tea bag stretch to be exact, and and I'm thinking at the back of my head, I'm like, T News, he he, this is this is this is his last go around, and he, like I said, he's he's a red firecracker when it comes down to arguing and, and drinking wild turkey, all of the above. Like, so for anybody to catch him, it was perfect for T to catch him. Um, but Inema happened to be T New and I's like um, at the time he was our assistant linebacker coach, so he was basically our GA basically at the time. So it was just kind of like when Inema was taking off and T New was taking off, we were like, "What the heck is?" And all when I looked again, I'm like, "Oh, T New caught him, so we're good." Like, <laughs> we're good. but I can remember now like going crazy like. Who is this guy at the bottom of the jumbo triangle? Who is this guy over here that said he couldn't catch him? And but that was that that was that was very intense for me. And like I said, my favorite color, and I was I don't think I've told anybody to this day, like my favorite color has been red, but I was so scared to say like red raider week. Like I felt bad for the quarterback, like don't practice, like you better not wear red on red raider week because they're probably gonna <laughs> Morel's probably gonna kill you because he hates red raiders. <laughs> Now, let me ask, were a lot of the players buying into what they were seeing with the clipboard and the jump and the, and, and the Red Raider guy and all that? Or, or was it, I mean, how, how was it taken by the team? Well, I, I think, like I said, I, I came from Dream College and some of the guys have been there a little longer, so they kind of have more. For me, this was my first, like, oh my gosh, like I had I was in Dream College, but this was like the real deal, like Red Raider hater week, like to this day, like sometimes I explain to my wife, like, yeah, we don't like those guys down there. Or I'll stop in Orange City and be like, "Hey, we hated these guys for for what?" <laughs> but after a while, I'm like, I I just don't know how to really explain the fact that like Red Raider Week is completely different from playing Dana, but in our reality, we treated them the same. It well, yeah, like, you guys didn't treat them well. You guys hammered them both times when you played. You guys held them to negative yards offense or something. T- Tim, Tim, you're my stack guy. Wasn't that some kind of crazy? Thing where they they had what did they have negative yards offense in that game at the bottom? I think that's still the record. There was a they held them like minus four yards rushing or something like that, and maybe a total yardage of ten or twelve yards, some somewhere in there. I'd have to I'd have to dig a little bit. I that's swear there was a record of like I was a GA that year, and I swear there was a record like it was minus, they had negative nine total yards. They had a few passes. Yeah. And we had them for a loss, but they had a total, and they were ranked like fourteenth in the nation, and right. like the number six or seven offense or something. And, and we and literally had, I think at the end of the game had negative nine offense and like the, one of the happiest I've ever seen Chuck Morrell. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It was like the most dominating I've ever seen. I don't think we beat them up on a the scoreboard that bad, but we, like you said, statistically right. we beat them like, like, Oh my gosh. Like we're literally, we're literally beating you in the game that you come to, to play. Like, we're, we were, I can remember that it was like negative 19 yards or something. And I look back at Demetrius and Kooster and all the guys. I'm like, dude, like, how do we? I can remember getting ready to blitz and Demetrius was blitzing as well. And we were literally talking before the play, like, I bet you I beat you there. <laughs> and they look, and they, they're looking at us like, one of the tackles was like, are they betting who's going to get home first? <laughs> And Meech was creeping up, and he got there before me. But I, I'll tell him I was a spill technique, so I had no choice to let him get there. So, but I'm like, they're like after the game, they're like, "Were well, you guys really betting like to beat us to the quarterback?" We was like, "Well, we were just betting to get to the tackle first. We didn't care who had the ball." <laughs> now, now, Tim, you you work at Northwestern, right? That's a different Northwestern. I, I'm affiliated with the NC Paul. Let's make that clear right now. <laughs> Let's not be spreading rumors. Yeah. Oh, man. So the, the, I think Morningside and Northwestern were both, you know, really big conference foes. You know, we played them every year, obviously, uh, sometimes in the playoffs. But um, there were a couple other teams that kind of, you know, crept into the – the, the tide here. One of them that I wanted to bring up uh, to start off with is uh, Carroll College. So obviously we played Carroll, you know, in some ser- some really, really big games over the years. You guys all had the opportunity to play against Carroll. Um, so, uh, you know, what, what were your memories from playing against Carroll? Brady, Tiff, why don't, a- Tiff, why don't you start off? Yeah, why don't you start with the 2005 game? I can tell you, you're jumping at the chance. Water, uh, the water freezing gate is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's let's hear about shoe gate. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I remember flying into Carol in Helena, Montana, and uh, free, like I remember, like just I, I live in Colorado now, and part of it is just I remember the snow in the mountains was so awesome, and um, I love that part. That was probably the best part of the trip. Um, but I, I I remember we got to walk around town a little bit, but it was like business as usual, and we got to the school. We get off the bus and we walk past their like trophy case of I it looked like in my head a hundred national championships and players of the year and Tyler Emmert, you know, shrines and you know, towels and things and I was like, Hope oh, I, I wasn't that intimidated till I started hearing like they're like, Man, did you see all that? And I was like, Yeah, I kinda did and then the reality started setting in. But in my head I, I knew they were honestly in my head I'll say this, I thought they were a little better than us. Um they were such a good team, but I didn't think they were like 55 to nothing better than us. But that day of the game, we went out on the field after it, after it rained that night and they call it the shoe gate. Um, they had supposedly cleats blown in from a school and they were like baseball cleats that stuck into high. Right. And you literally couldn't, you like spikes were like, they didn't, they didn't go into the turf. So you were just like on stilts and then tennis shoes worked a little better. So most of us ended up wearing like tennis shoes or some kids had like rubber cleats, but we were NAI. So we didn't have like a, sh like Nike sending us shoes. We just had whatever we brought with us on the airplane. And I mean, I remember just it being over when I like, we knew it was going like deep to dusty and dusty was in his stance and he like, yeah. so it was like Fred Flintstone. Like his feet were just like <laughs> going and the DB was just like waiting for him to like, what is he doing? And, and we couldn't even like get off. It was, yeah, I mean, no, no excuses. They were better than us, but that that field was embarrassing, and I hate to make weather excuses for Carol, but no, I I can remember uh, what the, a local station here. I forget which one covered the game or or got the feed from out there, and I can remember exactly what you're talking about, where you could tell immediately it looked like USF was on skates, and it took literally like five, ten minutes of watching the game. And you're like. This isn't going to be close because you could just tell that it was it wasn't happening, and Carol wasn't having that kind of trouble. Shway, what do you remember from that? I remember coming out, you know, for our warm ups, and uh, I mean, I first thing I, I was like, you know, shoot, I'm gonna have to change my cleats, you know, once we head back into the locker room because you know they actually told us to bring a couple different cleats. Um, I mean, it was even during warm ups, you know, we're sitting there doing an inside game. I mean, you couldn't do anything. I mean, I, I like you said, it, it felt like I was on an ice skating rink with cleats. Um, obviously, even changing cleats, I, I still don't think that helped tremendously. But you know, to just credit, I mean, I think they were definitely a good team. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the, the better team won that day. But um, you know, I just I don't think they were obviously a fifty-five to zero um, better team than us. But uh, obviously, you know, hearing that they had different tracks, you know, spikes, you know, flowing in that night. Um, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's yeah, it's ancient history. You know, we, we got a loss that night, but it, it was it was a gut shot, like walking off that field. I remember, you know, my dad, uh, my brother, going off that game. Um, even seeing that, it was it was it was sad to look at them and just handle that defeat. You know, we're, like we like we're a good team. Like we we had a lot of great great talent on that team that year, and just like walk off that field and see my family afterwards, it was it was a gut shot. You know, that's. That's why I think we, you know, we rebounded so well the next year is because I think that really lasted in our heads, you know, throughout the winter, you know, getting back into spring, you know, spring camp, you know, um, especially over the summer. I mean, you could see everyone just working so much harder in the weight room. I mean, you could just, you could, it was, you, you didn't even have to say anything. I mean, you could just, you could see in people's workouts, you could see it just in how they were practicing that, you know, hey, we're going to take that fuel and, and use it for the next season. Yeah. I, I'll never forget the the post game. <laughs> they put Tom and I literally in the at the highest point in that stadium. We were way at the top, and they didn't have a window. It was just an open air, and it was a cold day. And Kalen, to his credit, he came up after the game. He answered every one of our questions. Uh, and <laughs> in in the commercial break, they had, they had brought up some food earlier in the day. There was like burgers and fries up there. Caleb was so hungry, he ate a whole hamburger and fries in the commercial break. <laughs> I guess he he went, was tired and hungry and cold or whatever, but he put that away. But then he answered all those questions. And I think, honestly, the fuel for what you guys did going forward um, started that very day. 
I mean, you guys uh, started talking about being back in that game the very next year that day. And, and you, I mean, obviously from that point on, you went 56 and one. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I, there was a couple, one other quick funny story. Tony Kenowitz uh, melted his gloves on the Nipco heater. Um, <laughs> they had Nipco heaters because it was so cold. And Tony from California is over there freezing his butt off and he threw his gloves up to the Nipco. And he's like, coach. And he like looks over and he's like, his gloves are melting. And he's just like, but he's still like, okay, because it's so cold. But, um, I even this coat too. There, there was a defining moment after that 05, and, and I saw Glasgow just throw it in. But um, anybody who was in the airport remembers uh, Coach Morell. I'll never forget the image. And he's over on the floor. You know, nobody really talked to him, even if you won, let alone six after 55. <laughs> He was over there, and he just he was just like he was down, like hunk, like not sitting on his butt, but like just kind of like squatted down up against the wall, and it looked like he was like kind of praying, but he was just like like the, the motor. He's like, we knew we needed to change. We were four four then, and we had some big guys, and I think we were a little a little slow, and obviously we got beat with speed on the ice rink, but he saw like he visioned the three four, and he went, and I know that off season they went, and they like went to some. I don't know where they went to so some coaches clinics and stuff, but they like, man, they mastered that three, four. And as you can say, like whatever 50 some and one or whatever, you know, we, we did after that. There, there was that defining moment where you just know Chuck Morrell was like, this is never happening to me again. And, and it's pretty powerful and pretty cool to like, for like one person. And I, and I know it's the board and those guys, but like for a defensive coach to be like, this is not happening. And then like truly not letting it happen again. Rob, let yeah. me ask, after you guys come out of that, then you guys end up, the next time you see Carol, ends up being, you know, on the rumble in the river, as I call it, in Savannah. We, I don't know about you guys. I remember opening the hotel door because we were staying in a hotel where you opened the door and you were outside. And um, I remember opening the door and it was raining sideways. And I thought to myself, this is not good for what, USF wants to do offensively because Brady back then you guys threw the ball around a fair amount and um, and Carol was would be pretty content playing that kind of game and what were your thoughts when you guys woke up when you had another chance at him and you saw that I mean I think obviously that whole week I mean it was I mean especially like going in you know after we beat you know and advanced from the semifinals and we knew we were playing Carol I mean you can just you can he knew it. Everyone just felt redemption, and, and the, hey, this is that grunge match that we've we've all been waiting for. Like, we're all the seniors. Like, this is this is what we prayed for. You know, this is the, ultimately the match that we want to go against. Um, you know, obviously, I know that whole week. You know, um, I mean, especially the games we played. You know, it was so cold back in uh, Sufu, and you know, going down to Tennessee and having all that warm weather. I think a lot of us that you know, luckily, were there for an entire week trying to adjust the you know the different weather, the humid uh atmosphere but um yeah that morning waking up i mean it was i mean when you say it was raining sideways i think that is probably the nicest way to put it i mean it was it was boring. It 10 inches? what's that i heard 10 inches between that morning and the end of the game it rained yeah i just remember being on the sidelines and being up to our shins and water on the sidelines which was crazy but um yeah i mean it's you know i think you know after talking to some of those guys after that game you know i got to actually know a couple of them, you know, after the uh, 07 season. I mean, they all said, you know, like, prior game before, you guys ran all over everybody. Like, why did you guys not run the football? Um, and I think that's kind of the mentality. I mean, Galen's, you know, he's a hell of a, he's got a hell of a, you know, offensive mind. I think, you know, he still thought we could, you know, out to pass the ball and beat him that way. But I think, you know, we should have probably at halftime changed the, the scheme up a little bit and started doing our ground pound. I mean, I, th I think truly, you know, Lowell Miller, that was kind of, he was kind of breaking out of his shell. And I think that, you know, he was kind of missing piece that we probably needed uh, during that 07 season just to really just cram it up the, the gut and, and obviously get that inside outside zone going. But um, obviously, we fell a little short for that day here. So I, uh, I remember waking up and just seeing the rain and being like, you know, I hate making excuses, but this, this is not going to work in our favor, kind of like we thought with, with our offense. Um, I know what, what I said earlier about Carol being better than us in 05, I, I truly believe we were better than them in 07. Um, like, and I mean, not even 
a little. I mean, I think you're, you know, maybe 10, 17 points better than they were. So to, to lose that way, I just remember going into that game and and saying, like, no matter what, like, I, this is my last game. And there's something really cool about knowing, like, your last game because it's a championship game. So no matter what, this is it. And I'm just like, no matter what, like, Randy Stewart always said, like, have no regrets, like, no excuses, no regrets. And I'm just like, I mean, I got. I got a little excuse, Randy, the rain, but um, <laughs> but uh, but I'm not gonna have any regrets. And I just remember like actually having one of my better games defensively that game. And like this is probably what kept me from jumping off a bridge. Just kidding, but you know, like <laughs> it, it was hard losing that game and they, like knowing that like that was it and th- that rain. And yeah, like Shway said, I remember standing on the sideline and being like, "Really, NAI? Like I'm I'm into my mid calf." of water on the sideline the ball is floating away when the ref said it and there's electrical cords from like cameras and stuff right. through this water i'm like how long until one of us gets electrocuted you know and i mean that's what we were worried about we weren't like thinking about like game plan change or like is anyone like stand on this metal bench there's a picture one of my favorite pictures is tyler newman and i somebody took it from the crowd and we're standing on the bench because the sidelines covered in water so we're just trying to keep our feet from just being underwater and we're just like covered in mud it's a pretty cool picture but it's just sad that that's how that game had to go down i i can remember driving down to see that game remember mick westerman yep uh mick and i uh riding in my old 2000 caddy deville and uh i knew it wasn't a good sign when we were heading south on uh 29 about beersford we happened to look out the window something was flying low I turn back around and my speedometer is at zero, but my vehicle's still going just fine. So for the next 12 hours, we were trying to guess what speed we were going because my <laughs> speedometer didn't work. So it, you, have you ever t- run into Westerman and ask him about that? Because we rode there and back trying to figure that out, and somehow it didn't get a ticket the whole way. But. Yeah. Tim, what, what do you remember about uh, about the Rumble in the River? Kind of what you guys were saying, too. I remember, uh, I think Tom and I think Sid Kortemeyer was riding with us from where we were staying. We kind of came down the hill from up where we stayed, and it started raining harder, and, and Sid kind of had that same thing. He's like, this this doesn't feel like a good omen today, guys. And, you know, it was it certainly hindered what you guys could do on offense, but um, you, you made some plays and, and stayed in the game, and then there was – if I remember right, we did we score to tie it? Like we hit a pass to Alex down the field, got real close, and then I don't know, it was maybe Low Miller or somebody scored to tie it. And on the next kickoff, they got a pretty decent return. Yeah. And then our defender couldn't stop on the water and ended up hitting the guy like four yards out of bounds. And he hit him hard. Was it you? <laughs> was it you, Rob? It probably was. I just I don't remember that. I don't think. Tip for you, offsides and late hit both on that one. <laughs> uh, I, get into my, I got I got my personal foul written down here when Morrell had to send me down and told me he was going to take me out of football games. If I getting personal fouls. Yeah, uh, it just felt like that was you know we had kind of gotten some momentum back and that kind of you just kind of felt it go right out of the sideline there and after that penalty and yeah it was it was a rough day yeah i think the worst part about it was i know i took a family trip uh, to hawaii you know several weeks after that game and i just remember being in the airport uh heading down to hawaii and i just was like hey i need something to read and first time <laughs> I book magazine store and i see that stupid uh sports illustrated yeah. that guy and i mean Talk about you're already you're already down in the dumps already feeling like you know what am I gonna do for the rest of my life? I gotta grow up now. Um, you know, <laughs> then all of a sudden you you know you lose the back to back champions and you're praying that it's that Cinderella ending, right? You you just did back to back national championships and you know he's got beat right there and he, he truly like Tiff said. I mean, we were better than them that year. I mean, hands down, we had so much talent. I mean, we wanted it bad, you know. Um, yeah, to see that magazine, I mean, it, it it still haunts me every, you know, 13th year. <laughs> Mar- Marlon, obviously you were, uh, you know, as as 2007 ends, 2008, you guys get a chance to, to play Carroll. Uh, I remember arriving there in Rome, Georgia, and that next morning, it was raining that day too. Uh, yes. 
but what 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 do you recall from uh, getting a chance to play Carol? Oh man, I, like 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 Swaybox said, seeing the Sports Illustrated, and I can remember once I once I got here and and seeing like that was like the first one of the first memories I had of being in a championship was like that was thrown in our face right away, and I'm just like, and Demetrius at the time was 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 a was a great leader and a great linebacker so he's like he, he's telling me like he's like dude we're not we're not bleeping losing this game like we're going out here to win and we get out there and we're practicing and the next day it starts to rain they fed us so much chick-fil-a and so many <laughs> i'm like what's like are we just gonna be able to play football and we got out there and it's raining and i, I look at if you can see my pinky that pinky is is Ooh. bend from the game like i'm literally in the game and it's like third and ten and they're not we're, we're beating them i think we're beating them like 23 zero at the time and i'm like i look down in my hand and i'm like oh my hands bro call a timeout meet and demetrius like forget your head they beat us last year we not <laughs> score. and i'm looking and i'm like my pinky's hanging over and, and 13 years later it's oh that's hard. hilarious yeah. I remember, He's just I remember, right. Yeah, I can remember the seniors that year, like seeing the look on their faces, like these guys actually wanted to be here because they lost to these guys last year, and this was like something that, like, okay, it was my junior year. I came in not knowing much and just came in and ready to play. And once we got there and we started playing, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is a little different. And we beat them, I think, 23 to 6 or 23 to 7. Yep. Whatever it is. It was one of those scores, but at the end of the day, it was like we wanted to beat them. But like Tiff said, we were better than them the, the previous year. And we had a lot of guys returning. And so when you put our group together with the group that we already had, it was like we know we're better than them. Let's go out and beat them. And, and we had the chance to beat them on the scoreboard, and it was raining. And I can remember, like, DeBoer was running the ball. And then all of a sudden, they threw the ball. Zoe threw the ball to, like, to like do something, I'm like, oh, that's just the board putting the icing on the cake. Like, we're gonna throw the ball too. Like, here you go. Like, boom. So I can remember, like, that was that was so amazing to to dump the, the water on them and see that it was raining and to know that okay, we're better than you. We shouldn't have lost last year. Put this on Sports Illustrated this year, and it didn't happen. But it, it went on our Sports Illustrated. We we got a championship and t shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I remember just at the beginning of the game, it was like. It looked like USF was bringing like eight guys every play for a while. I mean, it was just there was just people getting through, and that that quarterback was running for his life, and he was trying to hold on to the football and everything else. And do you remember the very first offensive play of that game? I do. When uh, when you remember when Cam, when Cam Horton, uh, Cam Horton was right in front of me, Tiff. You might I don't know if you were you were you on the sideline at that point, Tiff. You were on, yeah, yeah. I remember sitting there with with Quail. And um, with Cam Horton, what co- quite the combo. And Horton <laughs> turns to me and he goes, he goes, Whit, tell me a little bit about this Flanagan guy. <laughs> I go, I go, he's going to be at left tackle here. I, I said, he's going to take somebody for a ride. So first play, they hike it and Flanagan took a guy and he played through the whistle. And um, they, it was like a two yard game, but Flanagan was about 10 yards down the field with his man. And I remember Horton turns around, and looks at me, and said, "Holy something or other." And he was like, "I might be watching him the rest of the day." But is that yeah. kind of what you were getting at? Yeah, he uh, like because that was Carol uh, linebacker won. I can't remember his name, but he won. Owen offense. Keppen. Keppen, yeah, Keppen won offensive player or defensive player, or he won NAI Player of the Year. Like Cavender won it the year before, and it like jinxed us, we thought, and then yep. he won it. And so I remember like being in that Logan, and you remember. Flanagan's like, yep. call my number, I'm, call my number. I'm going to get him. I'll show you guys. I'll show you. And we're like, all right, so Flanagan, you're good. You're not going to surprise us. Flanagan had no keep at that time. He took just a like, Yeah, exactly. 10 yards, and then, like, the last five yards, it just kind of flicks him. And you're like, yeah, that's going to be how this game is going to go. Yeah, that game could have been sponsored by IHOP the way he was on him. But, yeah, um, he, what, it, it was funny. I remember, uh, yeah, he, he would – he told me – He's, he had played against him before because, Tim, you will recall, what, what was – Flanagan had a cup of coffee at Eastern Oregon or something like that? at the University of Oregon. I think oh, yeah, yeah. But, but then and after he that, he played there. one yeah. season okay. against him in the Frontier. Oh, and sure. He, okay. And he said that Keppen was chirping all the time huh. when they played. 
And uh, and so yeah, he's he's. Uh, I mean, he had like kept in radar that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, anytime where he got a chance to go downhill on him, I remember there was a few pictures that Beechner's dad got from the game where literally, you know, Flanagan's helping himself off of him mm-hmm. with Keppen flat on his back. It was that kind of football game. But Martin, speaking speaking of Flanagan, Marlon, what do you what do you remember? You had to go against, you know. Sean Flanagan. I mean, he was a big fella. Um, I, I know you got the best of him, or at least that's going to be your version of it. But <laughs> well, to be quite honest with you, to be quite honest with you, Dorian. But we'll ask him if we want honesty. But we just want your answer. To be quite honest with you, um, <laughs> Flanagan probably prepared me the best when it came to like he's not going to settle for me chirping. Like I was a chirper, and I still am a chirper, but. He didn't settle for that. It was literally like you have to line up in front of me to show me that you can. <laughs> and it, there were times where like my bull rush didn't work, my dip and rip didn't work, whatever didn't work. And anytime he come out, hike up his little shorts and his teeth is out, and I'm like, what the heck? And I can remember like coach, coach, Robinson, coach yeah. simple at the time. He coached the tight ends, and I, I would get past the tight end and Sean Flanagan would be like, they move the tight end over. And I normally will flip to the strong side. They're like, nah, stay on this side. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to go against Sean. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go against him right now. So in in years later when I played against him in indoor football, he came and hunted me down like, I'm coming for you, Logan. <laughs> so I trust me, I, I felt like the linebacker from Carroll at times, like, oh my gosh, like you get the chance to line up against Sean. He's probably going to do work against you. But in all reality, he prepared me the best. Um, and that sure. mean Travis B. and the rest of the guy wasn't 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 too far off. But he just had a different a different mindset when it came to lining up and and week in and week out. We were and we were battle tested in practice because it was just like T T J and Stout and everybody right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah line yeah. up big fish. Line up against Flanagan. And at the time he. He would talk about how he played at Oregon and how my brother played there. And so he was like, yeah, I'll do you just like I did your brother. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, here we go. <laughs> Tim, what, what do you recall from uh, from, from some of those Carroll trips, uh, whether it was Tennessee or, or, or Georgia? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you're talking about Flanagan and the play that, that comes to mind. It, I think it was in the second half. Um, it was like a third down, and it, I think it was a design. Zoe called his own number, and – and he broke through the initial, and, and Flanagan got rid of the guy on the line, threw him aside, found a linebacker, threw him aside, and Zoe was still going. He found a defensive back and threw that guy aside. He threw three guys down on one play, and Zoe got the first down, and it was that – you guys were kind of toying with him at that point, I think. But, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of a lot of heartbreak in that Carroll rivalry. I mean, you go back before you guys to 2002, uh, a game that – you know, we uh, USF had in the bag at Howard Wood in the national semifinals, and uh, a play uh, halfback pass got called, and um, you know they picked it off, and then they scored on the very next play, and it, yeah, it was just kind of one of those things where that kind of started them on their run of I think they won, did they went four straight with something like that, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was, I mean, there was a lot of heartbreak in that rivalry, and and to get to 08 and finally get that win, I mean it. it literally felt like the you know the the big weight off your shoulders as a whole program i'm sure it did for for kaylin and the rest of the coaching staff but obviously uh you players felt that too i'm sure so. yeah we spent 16 hours in the airport after that win for no reason but <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i just remember that there was so much heat from their their fans on on that on the on the message board and all that stuff and I just remember telling a few of your guys, I'm like, you're playing for my message board life right now, so you got to take care of business. I don't want to have to go back and deal with them again. So that was, I was, I was pretty happy. But uh, Chad, Chad, what, what, what are your thoughts of uh, uh, Chad? Uh, you, you did not get a chance to play Carol, but obviously, you know, got a chance to see uh, uh, plenty of the contests with him in all, all big games. What, what, what are your recollections of Carol? Right. I mean, going back to you know what we talked about earlier that. Uh, the, the 2005, you know, I, I remember that was the same day as the the zip feed mill, you know, disaster. Oh, yeah. in uh, and so, you know, I remember watching that on TV and, and you know, I, God, it, it was so frustrating. Um, so I, I, I'm going to tell a, a quick story here. You know, my 
my dad graduated from Sioux Falls College in 1961, you know, graduated same year as Coach Young. I, I always say that's the only reason I got recruited to play at USF is because my dad knew Coach Young. But uh, that, that was, you know, after um, my playing days were over, one of my favorite things to do was watch USF games with my dad. And so, you know, we, we always enjoyed watching that. We watched uh, both those championship games together that you guys were talking about. And I kept rem just remember thinking in that 2007 game, why aren't we running the ball? Why are we not running the ball? Let's run the ball. And then in 2008, we came out and just hammered them, uh, you know, just running the ball and dominant defense. And it was just a, a totally – I was like, why didn't we do that last year? We, <laughs> we would have crushed them at the time. So – those are some of my recollections from from a lot of those games. Sure, sure. Um, so I, I did want to talk. I want to throw a couple more teams out here because I, I you know, I want to end with some some really good memories. But uh, one of the ones for for the guys that played in the uh, 06 and 07 uh, seasons was uh, Missouri Valley. So obviously a couple like classic games right there. I don't know if you guys want to talk about any of that. That stuff. Schwebach, you look like you might still be sore from those games. No, no. <laughs> I just, I mean, the first time we played them, I just, I mean, it was a Howard Wood, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. I mean, I, if, I know, I'm sure the story has changed as the years progress, but I, I'm not getting yet. I think it was like minus 30 with the wind chill that day. I mean, it was cold. Cold. I've been in, like, I've hunted in some cold stuff. It is, it, that was the coldest day of my life life like it was cold with the heater on in your car driving to Howard that was the coldest sorry to interrupt but that was so cold that day. Tiff, what, Tiff, Tiff, you, you mentioned that was 15 yeah, was gonna... kickoff with a 26 mile an hour wind and then multiply that because it was at Howard Wood so yeah it was in the the double digits below zero for sure I remember getting out of my vehicle taking about 10 steps stopping going back to my vehicle in a hurry <laughs> sitting in the vehicle <laughs> reconsidering this entire decision about watching this football game live in person. I, I was figuring, you know, how can I do this and just, no, I have to go in. Okay. And I remember watching the entire game because the wind was blowing left to right. I watched the entire game like this, like to the side. I've never watched a football game sideways. Watched the entire football game sideways because that was brutal. The worst football game I've ever been to in terms of how cold it, didn't it was. Matter if you were delivering the hit or if you were getting hit, man, it, it hurt the hippie flat day. I mean, your beards were frozen. I mean, it didn't matter even if, I mean, obviously out there running around, you were sweating and feeling warm, but then you come off of the sidelines while the defense going out there and you get all cool again. It, it was definitely a brutal first. Uh, but one thing I'll, I'll never forget is, you know, both, both games. We smoked them, you know, to also win the game with that tight end delay with, with yeah, Josiah. I love that. It was just, it was like the, just the, something the second time we played them, you know, to go to, you know, I was play 06 and you know for the championship. I mean, just for Josiah to get that number called again for that that same little tight end delay. I mean, it was. I mean, I can't believe they didn't see it coming. I mean, I I could have wrote a book on that one, you know, but <laughs> uh, it was. Just being able to go back, I mean, that's one of those teams. I mean, they, they came to play, too. They were scripted pretty well. Their defense, you know, they had some really fast defensive linemen. Their linebackers were, you know, scraping down the hill. Um, but yeah. that's what, uh, you know, hopefully just I was watching this down, down in where it's warm down there in Arizona. But, uh, yeah, that was a hell of a play, those, that little tight end delay that we had for him. Hey, you know what's funny? The force still runs that play. Oh, yeah. I remember in 06, just like it, the cold will forever. I'll never forget the cold that game, but just how good they were. Like, um, you know, I kind of went in fully expecting like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to beat these guys. And um, they were, they were just as good, maybe if not a little better than us. I remember after we won being like, man, if we play them again, I don't know how that game would go. Yeah. And uh, they gave us all we wanted. And But I do remember, like, I don't know, Schwebach, um, Marlon, if you remember these this feeling, but, like, when we won that game in 06, there was, like, this feeling. Like, I felt like I won the Super Bowl. Like, the championship was cool winning that, but it, to me it was, like, half as cool as winning that final semifinal game because it was like now we get to go now we get to go to the championship but and then after we won the championship it was like okay what's next now who do we play oh this that was it but the semifinal man that was like 
like a proud moment. Like, I don't know, we beat a lot of teams. So it was just like, yeah, another win. But that one felt like, I just remember we were celebrating, we were running around on the field, like NAI people were there to like tell us our plans for fly out to the national championship. I don't know. It was just this, all this excitement that was just so cool. And then the second game, um, didn't it get canceled because of weather? Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember being out at a. Yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim, what, what do you recall about that? Because there was, there was a little bit, little bit of story behind that whole deal. Well, I remember it started snowing early that morning, and uh, I typically try to get to the stadium about two, two and a half hours before kickoff. And I was getting in my car, pulling out of the driveway, and my phone rings, and it's Tom. He's like, "I'm at the stadium, but they just canceled the game." I'm like, "You're kidding me! Why are they canceling the game for?" And and that sure enough that and they canceled it because there was something like they couldn't they didn't have the right machinery to clean off the field or something that day or yeah. it was something like that and then I remember the next day when we did play it um, the sun came out and it was again it was freezing cold I don't think it was as windy but you know I, I remember opening a can of, of Mountain Dew in the first half and it was frozen by halftime because it was the fishing shack back then. We didn't have the enclosed uh, press box like we do that, now. So, Tim, I was I was on the faculty uh, at, that year, and okay, and I remember when, when they postponed the game, uh, they sent out a, a campus wide email to all the staff and said, "If anyone is able, bring some shovels out to the stadium <laughs> and help clear snow because we need to get this field field cleared off so we can play on Sunday." Yeah, I, I, I remember I remember being out in Douglas, South Dakota. Uh, my ex-wife's best friend was getting married out there. And I was like, this is not good timing. And um, I remember Quay, Darren Quayle calls me. Says, Whit, they canceled the game. And I was like, really? I was I was the happiest person because I knew I could come home and see the game the next day. Yeah. I know you guys weren't happy about it. And the well, Missouri Valley fans were they were great about it. Oh, yeah. they were so mad. I remember thinking, like, this is going to work to our advantage because we're used to this cold and we're like, you know, we practice in this. So, you know, it's only going to work to our advantage, like having them up here and getting like colder another day. I remember kind of thinking that. But I mean, you know, I know talking about the second game, I, I don't know if you guys know a lot more about USF history than I do. But I mean, we made shirts about it called, you know, the drive. And, you know, that that's. I don't know if there's ever been a more historical drive in USF history, but um, you talking about the Xavier one. I just remember our offense was not clicking. Our defense was playing okay, and our offense, like we, I don't know if we crossed the fifty. Like maybe once we crossed the fifty, like right. the entire game, or like you know whatever. I, I can't. I'm bad with scores and memory and stuff, but I just remember like, like, kind of like. I mean, yeah, I, I was crying. I was like coming out the field. I'm like, this is it. You know, we haven't crossed the fifty, and we have to score. And, like, I think, like, three or four of us went up to Cavender and we, like, kind of grabbed him and we were, like, you know, I was, like, you know, do this, man. Like, whatever you got to do, you know, like, just do this. And I went over to the sideline and I'm, like, you know, this is my career. This is where it ends. It's been good. Um, I, I just pray we can do something. But it just really felt like – I hate saying that, but, like, it felt like that was it. And then all of a sudden we got a little and we got a little and we got a little. Yeah. And tight end dump. And, I mean, like, it was just – I mean, the, the, it's in the history books. I mean, the, it was just, the, you know, we're like, oh, but then there was still some game left. And they put a little drive together. And I remember they had a field goal. That, I can't remember what, if they would have won or if, if, if they would have put a little one. It was a long field goal, cold day. And I'm just like, this is it. This is my last play as a senior. Like, if he makes this, like, I have to block this thing. And I'm pretty sure I got through, like, really clean. And it was right between my hands, but Darren Quayle got a, a, a mitt on it. And Quayle blocked it, and I fell on the turf. And I looked over, and it was a freezing cold, and I saw the ball, like, not even close to the goal line, and I knew we won. And it was, like, that feeling of, like, I don't know. It was just, like, the best feeling all over again. You know, just we worked so hard, and knowing that I was out on the field to block that, I didn't block it, but just, like, we got in there and knew that it wasn't even close. It was just such a – yeah, we, we won again. We beat them. We beat a great team twice. Yeah, they they were they they, they could have won a championship. That was a very good squad. I yeah. remember they they were playing some bump coverage, uh, and and USF was struggling with that offensively. Chad got hit quite a few times, Brady, and um, you know, <laughs> you, he, <laughs> I remember Horton said he. Uh, 
Well, Hort, Horton was saying that he, he he's, he's like, man, he goes, there was guys coming from everywhere. And uh, what, what, what do you recall about trying to, I mean, obviously you guys made a drive at the end, but what do you guys, what do you remember about some of the challenges of, of moving the ball on them? I mean, it, cause it was 11 to 10 was the final, but until that point, you know, uh, things were tough. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a team that just went out there and gave it their all. I mean, it's, it's, it might be just a, another USF team, you know, out there just truly giving it their all. I mean, those, those kids, they wanted to win that game. You know, and it's, I think both on it, you know, who truly wants it better. We've been into closer, you know, tight games like that. We knew what it was going to take to win. And, you know, I remember especially being in the huddle, you know, on that series. And I just, I looked at everyone. I said, Hey, I don't, I don't give a, I don't give a crap. If you got to lay your butt on the line, you know, we're going to hold this line. You know, we got to get the chat the time that he needs. We need to make these holds. Um, I'll tell you, that's the one thing that, you know, throughout my whole USF career, I mean, it not only is the brotherhood that you build, you know, with all your other teammates, but especially with the old line, I mean, you're down there in the trenches. I mean, just the amount of workouts and preparation we put into that, it's just like, hey, this is do or die time. Like, this is it. Like Tim said, this is, this is our – for this is our career. This is it, you know. Um, but I remember, I mean, their defense the line, I mean, they were quick. They're, they're linebackers, they are quick. But it's just, you know, we just had to have a, you know, fine-tuned line and – focus on the basics of just knowing, you know, these plays work for a reason, right? We've, we've done it a hundred times before. Um, we've ran bread and butter inside zone, outside zone since, you know, Bob Young's days. I mean, we, we knew at the end of the day, if we everyone did their job, you know, we were come out on top. So I remember yeah. Ernie, I remember Ernie Eaton catching a little dump pass and rumbling with it for like 30, 40 yards through the middle of the field. It seemed like it took a half hour. Don't tell me I said that. But um, <laughs> you talked about the he went, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I I just for some reason I have that <laughs> that, that memory in my head uh, with Ernie. That, but yeah. Well, you know. uh, so I wanted to talk. Uh, you know, I I don't want to keep us too late here tonight. We could probably tell stories till midnight. Uh <laughs> I did want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the games in, in Marlins year uh, 2009 season. And that was the game up in Grand Forks um, against the University of North Dakota. So, um, you know, that a lot of people have said that's maybe the most important win in USF history and things of that nature. Uh, what what do you remember about that game? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember where we were coming from. I don't know if it was... I, we were on a bus, and I overheard um, uh, Simple and a few coaches talking about the possibility of playing them, and I immediately went back because Zoe was my roommate at the time, and I immediately went back and talked to him like, hey, the chances – they said something like, next year we're going to play, I don't know, one of these schools in in North Dakota, North Dakota, North Dakota State. I didn't, it didn't really matter, and, and I can remember looking at Zoe. He's like, oh, really? Well, we're going to bust there, and I'm like, well, he's already he's already ready to bust somebody's butt in a year from now. So, as the year went on and found out that we were going to play UND, um, I can remember coming in for camp and, and sometime in August, and um, we reported and we had we did all of our we played uh who do we play um uh, not Northwestern um first game they're brown they're like gold helmets they're out of Nebraska um, Wesleyan. Wesleyan? Yeah, we played in Nebraska Wesleyan the first game at home, and I can remember playing and doing all this stuff. And a couple of weeks later, I uh, I can remember UND had played Texas Tech. And I remember, like, they played early before we played. And I remember Morrell, I was walking through the hallways, and, and Morrell called me into his office. He's like, hey, come over here, big fish. I go over there, and he's like, look, look, I got a, I got a you know, head start on, on UND. I'm like, that's week seven. He's like, don't worry. I'm still preparing for Brian Cliff. I'm, I'm just giving you a hint. I knew it. Going, I knew it. Okay. He, he, he basically told me, like, we're going to be prepared. And I'm just – he's like, you do your part, you know, for these next four or five weeks. And I can remember we played um, um, Briar Cliff on Thursday night game um, prior yep. to going to UND. And Briar Cliff wasn't a cake – wasn't a cakewalk as we kind of would assume they would be prior to playing UND. But it was like we went out there. I think we beat them like forty-five to ten. But they were coaching us so intense. I'm like, dude, like it's Briar Cliff. Like we're here to we're, we're here to play football on Thursday night. It was like the weekend before 
two weeks before Halloween or uh, whatever. I can remember, like, this is not like trick or treat. Like, we're going to go beat these guys and we're going to go have fun the following week and go to UND. And then I remember during the year, Joe and I were roommates. We wrote USF 150 on our board and it was outside of our door. Um, and a lot of people walk by and ask us, like, what does USF 150 mean? We would just say, like, flight 150. But in the back of our head, we knew, like, it was 15 and 0. Like, we didn't want to be like, oh, the only two guys on the team that think they're like, oh, we're going 15 and 0 no matter what. But we was like, okay, well, let's just say, like, USF 150. So it's not like, you know, somebody thinking, like, oh, we're bigger than the team. So we would go on and say that. And throughout the year, we would look at each other, like, come on, bro. We know, like, USF 150. And I remember getting a week seven. It was UND week. That was like our first game playing full game compared to like, we normally will play a full game in December, November, December. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to die because I'm not ready to play a full game because we just didn't play full games. I got there and I'm like in the dome and they're rumbling, they're crying, they're yelling. And, and I remember Tyler, I remember, I remember I'm Trevor, not Tyler. I remember Trevor, like, he warmed up before the game and he ran out, he led the tunnel. And I just like looked over, I'm like, Oh, we really got a chance. And Lavelle returned to opening kickoff return. And from there I was like, Oh, we got this. No question asked. And from, from the moment of, you know, writing USF 150 to building up from the bus and just seeing that, like, we're going to play somebody that's bigger than us and supposedly better than us. We, we were prepared. And that's one thing I remember, like, they didn't give us opportunity not to be prepared. They gave us everything to be prepared. And I remember when they shifted the tight end, we I ran across formation. They're like, most teams don't do that. I'm like, oh, you must not know Morrell. He, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got us ready. Like, Marlon, don't go across the linebacker's face, but get across their face now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I can so, remember yeah, those, it. Those yeah. Good times. yeah. Now, a- after the first drive, the offense, you know, gets down the field, scores. And I mean, then marched, you know, and, and scored. LeBrun scores a touchdown. That had yep. to give you guys a, 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 a shot of energy right there, knowing that you were, hey, hey, we can do this, wasn't it? But but you got to remember, Scotty was like 10 years older than everybody at the time. So <laughs> I, 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 I love Scotty. So he, he took advantage of his grown man strip at the time and said, <laughs> I'm, I'm going this way and doing this. But yeah, like, as you said, that gave us like, that gave us the momentum and the confidence. But I'll be completely honest, playing with Zoe and knowing Zoe and, and knowing the way DeBoer had faith in those guys on the offensive side of the ball, they were so ready. It was like, for us, it was like, when it's all said and done, we roll back for that little road trip and we're just sitting back. And we know we got a few ice cubes on our body. And we're thinking like, dude, we just went up here and shocked the world. Shocked the world. And then... In the back of our head, we're like, well, we didn't shock anybody. We felt like we were going to go win this ball game. And, you know, a lot of people are looking for excuses for UND. Oh, they had – no, we knew that, like, we had been preparing and we were going to win the ball game because that's what winners do. And, and that was when it really stuck to me. Like, bro, like, you really have an opportunity to win. You're going to find a way to win, whether it's prepping more than anybody else or whether it's literally going out here and running a tight end down the or – because they can't stop it. So it's like, we ran that play too in that game. So I was like, yeah. what, what do you do? Like, that's just how we prepared. And those coaches put, they put it, they put it, they put it, put, put a showcase together and we was able to go and have fun doing it. What, uh, do you remember that receiver they had, Bamba? That guy, yep, that yep, burner they yep. had? I remember how well yep. Cody, uh, Cody Kevin yep. really competed with him that day. I was, and, and, he was really, he was battling and knocking balls away and really playing great. Something about those counters and big time games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Tiff, I I remember I remember driving up to the game. Josiah was with me, and Tiff, if I'm not mistaken, you were driving like a Subaru at the time or something. Um, I got a good memory for th- things like that. Um, and uh, I recall you were there, Shway. I don't recall if you were there or not. But yeah, for you that. guys, as former players, you had to be feeling that too, weren't you? Big time. Yeah, it's. For me, it was like this was before Augustana, so like we, Shway, you know this. Like every party we went to, Augustana guys would show up and talk crap to us and stuff like that. So there was like a big rivalry, and it was like, can we beat them? Like, are we? Kidding? I think we're better than Augie, but are we? And so like we finally got to play someone that was division 
II, you know, somebody like their caliber, and, and not only Division II, but Division II. Um, and uh, so I know, like, as an older, you know, as a, as an old former player, I kind of felt that, um, like, man, if we win this, like, I know we were better than Augie and I played, you know, and, and yeah. So I had that feeling, like, man, I really hope for, even if they keep it close, we could have beat Augie and I played, you know, kind of thing. And man, they went up there and it. I just, yeah, I, I was like, like a parent. Like I was proud as all of those guys. <laughs> So happy that they, uh, yeah. I mean, like, like you said, probably the most important win in USF history. Really, like set set the tone for us and show. Yeah, and that was at study tables, not parties. I think you're mistaken, but um, <laughs> 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 uh, I think it was it was cool to see. I think you're you're right. I mean, it was kind of back in those days, like you know, we we're so close to Augie. I mean, you literally stood on their campus from USF and. It was it was that, that fine at a time when we had the spotlight, you know. Hey, can we can we go to this next? You know, we have the caliber of athletes, but can we truly even compete at that kind of level? And just to see that you guys went out there and laid a stomping on them, I mean, it was it was so rewarding. I mean, it's it's still even to this day, you know, watching the USF, you know, progress and and, and obviously keep uh, the tradition going. It's it's just so humbling to see, you know, that. Even the people that came before us, you know, what what kind of pathway has has just slowly led USF throughout history? Yeah, that's that's amazing. And to know that, like, I mean, they went up there the following was it the following year or two years later they played again. Um, they played them really well, and I think it came down to a field goal at the end. Yeah, they, exactly. They so, yeah. like, to know that, like, but at that time, the second time the go around, I think UND had that. Like that taste in their mouth, like this can't happen again. Like no way to for us to even play them as close that we played them the second time. For me, it was like no, we literally have an opportunity to show people that like USF just not some little piddly piece of football in the corner of South Dakota. We're we're we're, we're literally a staple in the state of South Dakota, and we can play football anywhere. Um, that's I, what it was for. Yeah, I can still remember their head coach. Was a Chris Musman getting interviewed at half? Yeah, um, he's using excuses. <laughs> and he was just—he had that look on his face, and he was like, uh, "I don't know." I mean, he just—he he was like, "I got nothing." I mean, he—he he was just like—he—he he was, he was like, and he even said, "He goes, we're getting out coached here." And I found it really interesting that he said that because not a lot of coaches will actually say that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, well, Burger, yeah. What what do you got, Chad? Well, I was just gonna say, you know, obviously. You know, I, I I think that I wanted to bring up one last game here, and that was the the 2006 championship game uh, against St. Francis. That was probably, you know, USF won the title in 96 and then got really, really close, had a lot of, you know, tough games, tough battles, you know, weird things that happened at the end of games. And so that 2006 championship kind of, you know, put the program over the hump again and really led to that, uh, that you know, sensational streak of, of three championships in four years. And so, you know, I've got a, we got a couple of guys here that, that played in that game. And so I wanted to maybe finish up by talking about that game. Uh, I, I remember it being like a little bit of a special teams battle. I remember they ran a fake punt and went right past, went right, right between Mike Warren and I, and I was like, warning. I'm like, we're going to like watch fake, watch fake. Cause we said it every time, but man, they ran a good one right past us. And, and then uh, Trey Erickson ran a kickoff back, I believe right after halftime. And it made like sports, like there wasn't much going on on sports center right then. And he was the number yeah. uh, nine, eight or nine, seven, five, three, two, or and one play. He, like was five like that. They just kept replaying that play for like, <laughs> 10 plays on sports center. Um, so I do know it was a little bit of a special teams battle, and I, and I wish I remembered a little bit more. But um, <laughs> that night on Beale Street probably erased to uh, brain cells. <laughs> we can talk more about that if we can. But uh, I was like, it was just cool. But like I said earlier, after it was over, I had this feeling of like, okay, who do we play now? Even though I knew there wasn't anybody, and it was right. exciting, but it, it didn't feel real at first. And um, I remember on the bus afterwards, uh, we get to Memphis and we're like, what are we going to do? Can we go party? Can we go have, you know, can we go celebrate this? And we're all like offense off the bus and they got off and Rel comes to the back and he's like, all right, we're in a big city. The airplane leaves early in the morning. 
well, you're also national champion. And he kind of smiled and we're like, whoa, he's also national champion. Like, whoa, we are. And they, yeah, there, it was, there was bottles of champagne in the hotel room and we were popping. And it just, I felt like we were like, we just won the world. Street. You know, it was just cool. Good memories. Rob, do you remember when, speaking of games, Glasgow got hurt in. Um, remember Glasgow got <laughs> hurt, you know, like about two minutes into that game. I can still see him stretching on the sideline and, did, didn't it was a Doug Carlson came in for him a bit and what, what, what do you recall about that do you remember didn't that happen really early yeah I mean just Glasgow is just like I hope he's still listening and I, I mean that not just because he's listening but I mean he was like really a soldier out there for us yeah. I mean, he did he played through like that Morningside game I wasn't kidding like any doctor I think the doctors were like I mean I don't even know if he went to the doctors because they would have said do not play he played really well I know Barnes pulled in for him but same way in this game he was kind of like he has this look of like, oh, like this is bad, but I'm not going to say anything. And we all like, right. we are all just like leaning on him. And, you know, like luckily Glasgow was a great athlete and, and we needed him. But, you know, our coaches had us all so prepared that Doug, Doug came in and, and filled, you know, when, when there's 11 guys out there, you can kind of like help help a guy out. And, and I know like Doug, Doug stepped up huge and, and Glasgow, I know, Still played his, his butt off and did everything he could, but that was just uh, another just tough injury for Glasgow. Shway, what do you remember about that? Didn't they have uh, was it Brian Curtis or Kurtz or something that superstar linebacker they had? And yeah, you, you, you remember that, playing them? That nose guard too. That was I mean he was a massive boy and long hair guy. Yeah, yeah, and he had a beard that I mean he looked like Paul Bunyan and he was just huge. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he was good. He was just hard to move. It was like moving like uh, Greg Jensen around, but he was bigger than Greg. Um, that, that's hard to imagine. I mean, Greg Diesel was a big boy. Um, but I, I'll tell you what, I think the biggest thing that sticks out for me is, you know, I remember when we got there that week, you know, we're, we were put up in this nice, like, really extravagant lodge, and, you know, we're trying to get you – know, it was our first time being there. We're not sure really what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and obviously, you know – St. Francis, I mean, they just, they've been there so many times. They kind of knew the drill. You know, we went to, you know, lunch and dinner and breakfast at different times. And you could just, you could just sense the tension between the teams. I mean, no eye contact, but you could, I mean, you cut it with butter, you know, like a knife with butter. It's just, it was just crazy. But, um, you know, I remember Coach DeBoer prior to that game, Tiff, I don't know if you remember this or if you guys remember this, but I remember Coach DeBoer saying, hey, after the national anthem, like the colors going to walk off the field. Make sure you guys stay on the field. And St. Francis had, you know, went to their sideline. We were still standing there waiting for the flags to disperse from the field. And I, I knew right then, I was like, hey, this is this is going to be a different game in our favor. You know, I, I'm not a big, you know, superstitious kind of guy, but I just I was like, hey, like, you know, we're representing ourselves well here. You know, um, and I remember it was a, it was a tough battle. It was a you know a tough game. I don't remember all the details about the game, but I just I remember you know. In the final seconds flew up that clock, you know, it was just, just to sit there and be like, holy cow, like all that hard work. I mean, we're national champions. And it's, it was just so hard to even say, you know, like even I know we were down in Memphis, you know, hanging out and um, looking at all the nice scenery down there and, and not doing anything that we should have been doing. But, uh, you know, it was, just, it truly was, it was such a humbling experience to know that, you know, finally since 96, we were able to accomplish something that, you know, a lot of teams are so close and, you know, I, I play with a lot of great athletes, you know, a lot of great people that have come from the program and just to know that, you know, they were there fight for the exact same battle that I was there fighting for was, was for a national championship and, and to be able to walk off that field to not only get it, but to know that we come back and possibly do it. We had so many returning stars coming back. I just, I mean, it was just such a humbling feeling. It was, it's was kind of hard almost to put into words the experience that, that I take away from that. There, there was, uh, I actually called Newman before this and asked him like what stories and we, he had a couple other ones, but there was one that we both agreed on. And um, before the game, Morel told a really good speech. He, I, I remember it too. He said something about like, uh, like life is filled with ordinary days and you're, you know, you wake up, you go to work, you wake up, go to work, take your kids to school, whatever. Like that's just how your day goes. And he's like, not every day is like, different than that and like when you wake up and you have like a day like today where you get to go accomplish something he's like you'll never forget this day and i remember you know we were all like wow it was like just such a powerful speech and 
you know, we all have our position coaches and defensively, you know, like Shway, you probably didn't work with Inama a ton. You know, I didn't work with like, you know, the wide receiver, you know, whoever the other coaches were. We just, you know, I didn't talk to Riggs a whole lot, you know, just that's kind of how it was. And so I didn't really know Coach Fitz very well. I knew him. He was funny. He'd always just make little crack for me about my personal fouls on special teams or something. But which way you have to remember this, like everybody does, like right before the game, I mean, we're like ready to go. I think it was right before the national anthem. We're like, I mean, it's, it's game time. And Fitz is like, get in here. And we're like, what? Like, what? Who is that? What do you want to say to us? Like, Fitz, what? And he gave a speech. He's like, all right, there's going to be a day where, and I'm going to butcher this, but he's like, you know, you're you're going to be in a bar fight with your buddies. And I want to know, like, who's going to swing the bar stool? Who's going to swing the, who's going to, like, who's going to make the knockout punch for your buddy? And he's like, today, you know, like, today is that fight. And it was just, like, Ask anybody from 06 after that speech, there was not a chance. If we were playing the Patriots, we were not losing that football game. <laughs> we, like, Coach Fitz is speech, like, Newman says the same thing. He's like, I don't, you know, some of them swing a bar stool. And, like, yeah, we, yeah, he just, and, and it was just like Coach Fitz, nobody really, you know, he was kind of volunteer, I think. And he, he just kind of came and went. And he was a running backs coach sometimes. <laughs> you know, man, that thing, that speech, like, catapult. Morale gave this, like, groundbreaking, like, you know, speech, and we're like, yeah, you know, but Fitz just like gives you, yeah, you know, you're going to be on a bar fight with your buddy. <laughs> you're going to punch somebody, you're going to run and hide, you know, who's going to swing the bar stool? And we're like, yeah, you know, like, ah. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I think it was pretty humbling because, you know, I, I play with, you know, uh, Tom Grogan, you know, when I first came in, and he was our offensive line coach at that point in time. And it, it wasn't about, so much of us winning that game and coming out on top, but it was, it was for all, I mean, like I remember, you know, in time, he's like, do you know how many people you're out there playing for? You're not just out there playing for your team and your teammates and, you know, your brothers, but you know, you're out there playing for the USF nation, you know, and it just, it was so impactful to be able to come off that field and just know, yeah, we were national champions, but it was like, Hey, the USF, USF nation is national champions, you know? So, yeah, it was good to be able to – because I know, you know, Tom Rogan, I mean, he was such a passionate player. He was – that's where I learned a lot of my, you know, my playing styles from him. Um, and it was just knowing that I was involved there and just – if I had to be carried out on a stretcher, that, you know, I was going to give everything that game, you know, for not only just, you know, for him, but for everybody, you know, that had come before me. Well, as, as one of those guys, I really enjoyed it, that victory. So uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Uh, guys, I wish, I like I said earlier, I wish we could sit here all night and continue to hash stories. But I think we probably need to get Tim to bed. Yeah. He looks like he, he's uh, a little bit past his bedtime <laughs> right now. I'm a fan. Uh, <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys all joining me tonight. Um it's been a, it's been a blast. Hopefully we can do this again another time. Um, you know, get some more teammates on here, talk about maybe some individual seasons or, or just do another memory show or something like that. Uh, but just go ahead and stick around. I'll end the live feed here in a little bit and then uh, we can do a little uh, post post show wrap afterwards. So thank you guys. Thanks guys. Thank you.